Welcome friends to the circle of knowledge called Avi's Academy. You are at the right place if you are learning commerce, management and economics at undergraduate and post graduation level and if you are one of those who have thirst for knowledge. In general parlance it is always difficult to measure somebody's intelligence. Yes, it is true that we use certain measures like intellectual quotient to quantify an individual's intelligence, but it is always questionable and a subject matter of uh, discussion whether it is right to quantify somebody's uh, intelligence or these measures are that are really a true measures of uh, intelligence. When it comes to the machines which we have created and their intelligence uh, point of view, there is a test which is uh, frequently used by the scientist to see or to verify whether uh, the machines possesses artificial intelligence. The test which we have already referred in our previous video on artificial intelligence history and milestones where we made a mention about a chatbot named Eugene Gooseman that has really uh, that that has recently uh, passed through this test in 2014. Right from the first ever made chatbot Elisa to Eugene Guzman, all these chatbots have passed through this test and the test I am referring to is developed by Alan Turing uh, in his uh, research published research work of 1950 where he made a mention about a game which is called as imitation game wherein in that paper he states that if any machine if it uh, able to convince around 30 percent of the judges that the machine is not a machine it is a human being then that uh, machine can be uh, considered as artificially intelligent so we have to see how this imitation game or uh, turing test uh, works in the real world so let's see that Alan Turing's test which is used to verify whether a system or computer possess artificial intelligence or not. We generally call it as imitation game and is played with the three people and it requires three setup. There should be three separate room. Inside each of these room three persons will be placed. For instance in the first room a lady is placed. In the second room a man is placed and in the third room there will be an interrogator all these three rooms will have an interconnected computer system or terminal and the communication between the interrogator and the person shall be made via text that means the players of this game are not permitted to communicate orally whatever they need to communicate that is only through textual messages from one computer to the interlinked uh, interrogators computer. The interrogators who can be of any gender knows the person in the first room as X and the second room as Y. That means the woman is coded as X and man is coded as Y. The purpose of the interrogator is to identify who is a man and who is a woman. This is a normal imitation game developed by Alan Turing. But when we apply or when we discuss about uh, Turing's test in the real world today, we generally understand the test in a following manner. The interrogator is connected with one person and one machine. Through computer terminals, the interrogator's duty is to find out out of the two which one is a machine. If the machine is successful in convincing the interrogator that it is not a machine, rather just a human being, then the machine can be declared as artificially intelligent. So this is how uh, Alan Turing's uh, imitation game works in the real world. So there are a lot of arguments against this test because uh, befooling somebody is not intelligence right because when we speak about intelligent we think from a positive angle and we expect a positive outcome from the intelligent being but here we are just verifying whether uh, the machine is able to fool the interrogator so that uh, uh, interrogator feels it is not a machine uh, it's just a human being so that is not right and another point of view is about uh, 
the computer which is used so computers are uh, generally has more storage space than human beings and they can huge voluminous uh, data or information uh, in their storage space as compared to human being at the same time the way in which uh, we process the uh, information or we take the decision is totally different from the computer takes computers uh, speed of uh, processing the data is much faster than uh, human beings speed so no aspect or no consideration is given to the memory and the speed of processing the information in Alan Turing's test because of all these arguments the test is criticized by many researchers and scholars in spite of that this test is used even today for measuring whether a machine is artificially intelligent or not the recent example uh, we can see in 2016 where uh, a chat box or sorry a chat bot named uh, Eugene uh, Gustman is uh, recently declared as artificially intelligent because it has passed Alan Turing's imitation game. So this is how uh, the Alan Turing's test is uh, really applied in the current world. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you like the video, give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel by clicking subscribe button. If you want to share the video, you can share the video because you can learn to share and share to learn. If you want to get continuous notification, click the bell icon there. And if you have uh, any comments, doubts, clarification, please write here. Thank you once again. Thank you all.